can tell it's the weekend. Yes. I just yeah. spelled I just spelled spelled traffic with a Q U E at the end. Oh. I think we might be onto something. Might be, well, well, okay, so interesting. My stepbrother once when he was a little kid, um, and I, I don't remember what age he came down to the United States with the family, but uh, this all wasn't of at my, band camp, was it? This one no, time no. at band camp, okay, no, not at all. So, okay, good. They so they came down from all they were all born. I have three stepbrothers and a stepsister, mm -hmm. um, the sister being the older one, and then down from there. So, the younger one, uh, they were all born in Canada and they came down to the United States. Um, I don't remember sometime in the 60s, I want to say, mm -hmm. but um. Anyway, they went back to Canada when he was a little bit older, but not too old. And there was a sign above some store or in the store or something like that that spelled out check. But in Canada, Q -U -E. they spell exactly. So he's like, Dad, what's a Chikui? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Love yeah, it. that, that story's always stuck with me. I thought it was very cute. Love it, love it. He's, I will he's tell not that cute anymore. Well, <laughs> you gotta you gotta work with that while it's working in your favor, right? Exactly. <laughs> I gotta tell you, if you are not uh, listeners and uh, viewers, if you're not catching us on our uh, uh, on uh, YouTube or on uh, Spotify, where you can actually see us, you are missing some of the best Harry Carey glasses that I could I'm, possibly I find. I was gonna say something about that, but do you uh, know how big my head is, and these look big on me. Oh, I know how big your head is. It's I mean, massive. Every, I have every a day, huge that's, noggin. That's why I, I try not to give you compliments <laughs> as much as possible, because I just don't think your head could get any bigger. No, it's massive. And it it's not massive. from the compliments. Let's be clear. I think it's it's from, well, it it's proportionate to the rest of me, which is also large and in charge. Um, right. But yeah, it's kind of the hairy. And I wouldn't be complete for my buddy Matt without me doing a little... Hey, Harry Carey, sort of a quick uh, <laughs> impression there. That's it. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Harry, or Harry Nice, as they would say. Or Harry Nice. That's yes. exactly it. So We're not going we to were... do take me out to the ball game, though. No, seventh please inning. no. We may be no. seventh inning stretch of potty mouths. Huh. Well, let's think you know, on that. So let's think on that. That would be a good one. It's uh, mm. expanding the potty verse. Ha one, ha two. No. A uh, three. I'm not sure why he went in three, three time no. or three, four time, but um, <laughs> people were a little bit slower back then running the bases. <laughs> and Harry had a couple of cocktails too. I'm thinking. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, cheers. Like you. Here's to Harry. And, and you're, you're not drinking. <laughs> and it's, uh, it, not it currently. Is... No. Lisa and I are taking a little break before Thanksgiving because mm. uh, uh, we needed to. <laughs> So that's we'll why I did sober Thanksgiving October. rolls around. Yes, sober October and sober October. And you seem to have picked right up, and you're much. You have greater clarity now. It seems like. Uh yeah, let's go with that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty. It, the, the wine has good clarity. You know, it's it's pretty good. Five. I can't wine. see anything through that. It needs to be a, a Sauvignon Blanc for a clarity. Yeah, no, we we don't Sorry. do Sauvignon Blanc in this house. I love Sauvignon what? Blanc. I am a Sauvignon what? Blanc. Yeah. Jen doesn't like it. Jen, Jen is a doesn't. Pinot Grigio. Yeah, she is definitely. Well, and Pinot's got its strong points too, but I, it depends on the the varietal, I guess, right. or the um, the year and the well, you can't make really and model. Ask, you you really can't ask for much for a five dollar Aldi wine, though. Oh, golly. so it's yeah, yeah. And that's what this is. They, this is a Cabernet. They which do I'm have. Also, they've got great wine. No, they've got well, good everything. It, yeah, and it's not. It's not, I mean, five bucks, yeah, yeah. But I, I know they have some like that, but there are some good ones for 15 bucks, 10 yeah. to 15. Well, I, I, honestly, this is, so this is, and not a sponsor, but this mm. is Highway 5, and it's a California, which, folks, let's get a little bit into wine right now. Um, oh, I actually had a go. conversation with somebody who said, you guys talk about coffee and tea a lot. And I said, we do. We also talk about booze a lot too. You're just missing those episodes, but Bob, Bobby uh, this booze is a Bozzy Bobby Bobby Boz booze a lot. Yeah, I say that five times. Mm -mm, Speak nope. of five times. This is Highway Five, <laughs> and it is an Aldi wine. Huh? And it was okay. like I think it was, it was maybe it was six ninety nine or something like that. It wasn't expensive. Hmm. Bought it for a party, and we never drank it. So that's what I'm drinking today because I didn't want to pop open one of my more expensive wines because I'm probably only going to have a glass or five. You know so. <laughs> Well, I think this is important to show your guests that you were not just serving them crap that you wouldn't drink yourself. 
Right, exactly. That's exactly it. So anyone that's coming over, you know, <laughs> never I've got some really <laughs> shitty wine for you. Ah, uh, well, but you seem to be oh. drinking. No, it actually, it actually is pretty good. Uh, I mean, I can't yeah. complain. I would, I would buy this again, and I probably will. Uh, even though it's a cab, I'm not. I don't mind cab. I like cab, cab with a good steak. Hmm. But my go-to red is usually a Pinot Noir. That's kind of where I. That's my comfort. My comfort wine. Yeah, I, and Lisa likes uh, Pinot Noir sometimes too. I'm more of uh, the other direction, Zinfandel, a yeah, nice like a good bold. Zin. Zin, yep. especially with a steak oh my goodness yep. yeah yeah but anyway so that's uh that's cool. why i'm i just you know we're going to talk about aldi we're going to talk about something you had mentioned before we got on the call which was mm. traffic yes traffic. john i'm gonna get a little ugly here so oh everyone, nick getting ugly hey let's, ladies let's, and gentlemen sit back and enjoy the styling you, of... you gotta do it you gotta do it like <laughs> harry carey though that's not that wasn't very harry carey Hey, Nick. No, he, he only, all he could say was Steve. Steve, bring me another ice cold Budweiser until he saw Dylan Mulroney or Mulvaney or whatever his name is. I don't think he would have been a Budweiser dude no, after that. No, that's Bud Light, yeah. though. Hey, why does that fella have boobies? That's probably what, <laughs> what Harry would I, have yeah, said. Probably, probably. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so anyway, so lay it out. let's let's talk about all the let's talk about traffic. I'm gonna get like yes, I said, everyone start, start be prepared. With the I'm I might actually get a little bit not political, but we might go a little bit into religion here a little bit, John. Oh, because good. I'm that I'm I'm a little fired up. I'm a little fired okay. up this week. This week is lay been it a long down, week, baby. But you know what? I have mentioned in past episodes. You're not the that, only one, by the way. <laughs> no, I know, I know. I'm there sure I'm sure there the are news. plenty. <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of people that will uh, get on board with with all the things that I'm about to say. Not I right. might rile some other people up, and you know what? I don't care at this point, and I'm going to tell on, you bring what. it. So, I know I've said this before, but I'm going to repeat it. I'm probably going to repeat it for every season at this time of year. I hate the holidays. And there's a nice pause there. I hate the holidays, not yeah. because of the getting together with f- friends and family. I love that part. I love the food. I love the camaraderie. I like the idea of the holidays. I like the idea of Thanksgiving. I like the idea of Christmas, but I hate the season around the holidays. And I, that is hate with a capital H cannot stand it because I cannot stand people. <laughs> there are so many rude people out right now. So, so much traffic, so many people. Wow. And it Excuse absolutely me. drives me nuts. <laughs> These, oh my God. I, so I went to Aldi's today. Yeah. Not, I did not buy this at all these today. I bought this before, but this is why can I'm just, drinking right now. Can I just do a step back? Be, I mean, speaking of all these, because if you haven't been to Aldi, and I know a lot of people, we were those people had driven by hundreds of times and never stopped in. No, I love Aldi. When you go in, and we do too, but for different reasons, um, it's they don't have the selection of a Walmart mm-hmm. or of you know some of the bigger, bigger stores. Nope. Um, but you kind of figure out what they're good at and that's what you buy there. And yep. so it might necessitate, you know, a, an extra visit or whatever, but the prices are such that it makes it worthwhile. And it's, it's laid out uh, one, two, three, four, maybe seven aisles or something like that, at least in the one that by us. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you haven't been there, you have to recognize that it's not that big. It's, no. I mean, it's good size, but it's compared to a Walmart. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not big at all. Correct. It's a building, so, not a warehouse. I just wanted to kind of lay that out in case people yeah. had not been there before. And Go if ahead. If you I'm haven't sorry. gone, I would highly recommend going. It is a, it yeah, is a me unique, too. Just not during the holidays. Well, or not when we go. Store. Yeah. yeah exactly. Call to make sure we're not there first. Well, and that's more difficult because they are not open as long. The hours aren't as long. I think, oh, okay. I think they open at nine or 10. Okay. And then they close at like six or seven. So they're not okay. open like a regular grocery store either. I, I am not dogging Aldi. Aldi is fantastic. I'm dogging the people in Aldi today. Mm, mm. It was packed. And it was like, every time I would go to a certain area, there's a massive freezer. And I would go to one area where I'm looking for something. And then someone would come up and stand right next to me because they were looking for the same thing or something yes. similar. I'm like, yes. why? Why yeah. do you need to be so close to me? Why are you running up my butt? I'm not, there are, there's nobody else around me. You can go somewhere else and get something else. Figuratively. Exactly. I do this. I do it. If I see someone standing where I'm going, I go somewhere else first and get what I need there Mm -hmm. and then go back. 
Well, I don't know why people don't. See, and they'll sit there and they'll stare at you. And I'm like, and this, honestly, folks, I'm sorry. This only seems to happen during the holiday season. Mm. And I don't understand why. And that people are so rude. I shouldn't. There was actually a couple of very nice people in the store today. So I was actually pretty impressed. I was kind of going, well, that's pretty impressive. So, uh, but anyway, people are just so rude during the holidays, mm. cutting people off, doing, oh, I'm just like, why? Why can't you just be kind? Why can't you? I mean, not that people are nice in our society all that much anymore. I mean, we're this is not just the holiday season, but it seems like during the holiday season, it's just amplified. And I mm -hmm. don't understand why. Why do people have to be so rude? And why do they have to be so self-centered? It drives mm -hmm. me absolutely nuts. It's kind so, of counter to what the holidays are supposed to be about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. that's why I, I don't, I used to love, I love the idea. Like I told, like I said earlier, I love the idea of the holidays. I just don't and, like the holidays and, anymore. And I'm appreciative of how you say that because I think we all do. I think everybody has that that uh, mental image of what the holidays mm -hmm. either used to be like or yep. should be like or both, you know. Yep. Um, but but it's just the I, I, the reality is so different, it seems like, mm -hmm. these days. And, and it's, uh, I, you know, I, you can point at a whole bunch of different things. You can point at, you know, the the turmoil around the world today and and uh you know all the hate speech about this and the right. anti this and the well you know, i can get on board this. with that but yep. john i here's some here's a point that i'd like to make when in our lifetime yeah and, and granted i'm and i'm not saying anything negatively about you the fact that you are older than i am but you've been around what? more than i have i know it's yes. surprising <laughs> but you've been around longer than i have have we ever been at a point in the world where everything and everyone is at peace. Heck no. no. Exactly. So is he that really is has a good it been excuse? Better, is it better than it is today? In sure. Some we, cases, I think we've had it could that. also. Sure. But it's been worse too. I, I, in, yeah. Yeah. You're right. It has. And I, so that's a great point. I, I don't know, Nick, that, that uh, I think it's, it's not so much. And this is one of my, favorite Jim Rohn lines that I've used many times. It's not so important what happens to us. It's what we do with what happens to us. And, and exactly. the people I love these that days, it seems like they, they just take the, the low road. And, and, yeah. and that's not just, uh, you know, in day-to-day -day life, it's not just in person. It's on social media. Obviously we always oh, yeah. see that where people are just, they're just rude. And, and so I, I, before, and I don't get on social media much, uh, but, I'm on YouTube enough and, and yeah. X from time to time, but uh, X we've always said is kind of a dumpster fire and, oh, and it is, and I can all only of them be on. I'm sorry. All of them. It, it, no, you're right. I, I mean, YouTube less so to me because if I don't like something, I just, I won't yeah, watch I mean, it. I'll you, just move you on. Can and curate your own. You re really can with YouTube a little bit more, it seems like, but uh, yeah, I, there are points and it's not just X it's uh, uh Fox News or CNN mm -hmm. or whoever you watch, I right. can only watch so much. And right. at some point I just go out, I'm out. Yeah. And and it's even to the point, and I love Megyn Kelly. Uh, I think she's brilliant and, and uh, has some good guests and has some great opinions and thought she's very thoughtful. But at some point I just got to go, Megs, I'm done. And yeah. whoever I'm listening to, it, it it just gets to be too much at some point. And if you can't, excuse yourself from that man yeah. you this is what causes some of this crap in the first place is 100 and, and it's and again it's tiktok and it's facebook yep. and it's wherever your head is all the time that's what yep. gets your attention yeah and it, it's it's leading to the poisoning of just society in general in many many mm. ways i mean of course i'm generalizing there are plenty of great sure. people out there john you, you and you and lisa <gasps> are, are a pair of them as are you very guys, few but and well, thank you. And, you know, it's, it's just, I don't understand. And I know you need to give everyone grace because everyone has their own sure. whatever happening, but it just happens so much. I, I've been hearing someone say lately, and I really like Jim Harold. So Jim, I don't know if you're familiar with Jim Harold, but Jim Harold's campfire. He's a paranormal podcast guy. We listen to him around Halloween. Peyton just really likes them. And in there, cool. very wholesome stories. It's kind of fun. Anyway, nice. when it comes to paranormal, this is where he uses it. But I think it could be used anywhere else. If it's too much of a coincidence, 
is it really a coincidence? Uh, yeah, I don't believe in coincidence anymore, but exactly. I frame so, it differently. It, it, so, you know, if there's something going on in your life, fine, we'll mm-hmm. have a little grace. But when something is going on in your life every single day of your life, you know what? Maybe we need to reassess how we're treating other people because of that. That, but so, also, also for some people, look in the mirror. Maybe exactly. it's you. Yeah. Maybe it's not the stuff that's happening to you. Maybe it's really you. Yeah. And and I, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm saying we've all, everybody has stuff. You know, I mean, everybody, I'm sorry, I just have to fire up my uh, my new uh, software, which I'm sure will be awesome yeah. on my yeah, big computer. You, you need you need some new software. I'm I'm with you on the grace part. There is no doubt, but but at some point, when people realize, some people realize that you're going to give them grace, they're going to take they're gonna advantage walk of that. Up, yeah, exactly, and that's if you allow them. Yeah, and and then I, the people that use excuses. So this is I'm going to use excuses in a different fashion. So one of the other reasons I'm fired up lately is. I, and I'm not going to name names or organizations because I don't want to be liable for anything. But uh, <laughs> my my wife, Jennifer, is dealing with some unsavory uh, people with the organization that she's partner. And I can't say partnering with yeah. but, um, that she's utilizing to help uh, sustain her business right now. Same and, people that you mentioned to me before. Yeah. OK. Um, so we have to go in today, Saturday. So tomorrow to uh fix part of the floor that we've mm-hmm. we installed and we've installed now twice uh because they're not happy with it and they're they're worried about certain things and you know what it's it's just the way that my wife has been treated and I I can take it uh, secondhand where she has explained it to me which is one thing but I've also experienced it firsthand mm-hmm. these people and this this is one thing that drives me nuts and and this has come up again. I know you and I have talked about it. And let me let me start by saying this, John. You are a religious person. That goes without I, saying, right? I, we, I, I we... wouldn't I wouldn't call me a religious person, other than the fact that I, I, I the religion thing, and without getting into great detail, the religion thing. I'm a believer, and yeah. so that's okay. how I kind of describe so myself. But yeah, you fair. you answer that like someone from the upper Midwest would answer that. Hmm. I'm saying that because that's how I grew up. Sure. I knew people that were religious. I knew mm. people that that went to church every Sunday. They did sure. church events. They, but you know what they never did? And I, this is this is going to fire a lot of people up, and mm. I don't apologize for it. <laughs> this is my opinion. This yes. is my experience. You're entitled. I would love for people to prove my experience is wrong. Mm. I haven't met the person yet to do that. But from mm. where I stand, from where I grew up, People up where I grew up were religious, but they never rubbed it in your face. Mm. They never used it as an excuse to do something or or have a certain behavior. They they just didn't talk about it mm-hmm. unless you were having a, a constructive conversation about it, sure. or you knew that you you know if you went to the church with the same people and you were talking yeah. about church, that's different. Sure. But I'm saying they never said, "Oh, I did this because I'm a Christian." Oh boy. You yeah. hear that a lot in the South. I know wow. I've lived in I've lived in Georgia. I've lived in Tennessee. I've lived South for a mi- upper Midwesterner in Missouri. Mm-hmm. Missouri, not I didn't hear it as much, uh, really, because they really are Midwesterners. But as I the further I've come South, the more I hear statements like that. So this organization that Jen is dealing with, both wow. of them. So there's two organizations in one. Both of them are Christian organizations. Yeah. And they treat her like absolute garbage. Some of them treat their employees like absolute garbage. Mm. And then they go around saying, well, we're a Christian organization. I'm like, okay, so Mm. if you're a Christian organization, where's your kindness? No. Where's your understanding? Where's the love that you say a Christian organization or a Christian in general is supposed to have? Yeah. Because you obviously don't show it. You are rude. You're entitled. Quite frankly, you're all assholes. Yeah. It's just my personal opinion. Well, let's let's call it what it is. And I, I so you don't need to say it, but I will say it because I can. Um, the uh, uh, the particular quote unquote Christian organizations you're talking about have it in their name. Yes. What I've come to learn 
at least here in Florida, is that does not mean anything. In fact, no. it's name only. For a lot of them, they are not, uh, they don't have anything in any of their charters that that recognizes oh. that beginning. Oh, you're right. But yeah. You know where and, they do have it? In their rental agreements. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And that's in an effort probably to drive a certain behavior that they're yes. looking to establish. Wow. Yes. So it's it's where it yeah, whatever. This is these are these are the people that Jesus will say, I never knew you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because that's that's what it is. Oh, but Lord, we did this and we did this and we did the I never knew you. And yeah. and that is the truth with a lot of these people. What the reality of the whole, oh, I'm religious, so I'm holier than thou, and I went to church, and this is what I did. It, if you are in that, I first of all, I pity you if you are, because that's not what being a believer is. It's right. not at all that. In fact, if you don't recognize what really Christianity is, it's trying to be more like Jesus than you are naturally. Than right. you are in the world. And you don't need and, to say you are. No. In fact, if you hold yourself up as a shining example of what to be, you don't understand Christianity. The reason we need Jesus is because we are sinners. And some of the worst I've met in churches, and that's church buildings. Churches are the people. The building is where we meet. And I will tell you that it's, uh, it's is that amazing like to me. Is what? that like a theater spelled with E-R versus R-E? Uh, R-E. No, dude, now, we are, <laughs> now we're back in Canada again. Um, <laughs> I, it, but it just amazes me that there are, and it's mostly, it, it, it's mostly the um, uh, long-term the, uh, I mean, people who might be an older congregation and how they expanded. They look at it as, well, this is what I do, and, and I have to do this X many times, and that makes me acceptable. Nothing you can do on your own, and here's your quick Christianity lesson, nothing you can do on your own makes you worthy to come before a holy God. Nothing. We cannot earn God's favor on our own. We have to have a Savior, the intermediary, who is Jesus. That's what I believe. I've gotten more clarity on that in the last 15 years, 20 years, than I ever had, and I've been going to church my whole life. And so for the first 35 or 40, um, I didn't really understand. And so there yeah, were a lot and, of people in varying levels of that relationship. Yeah. Well, and let's, I'm going to put it a little bluntly here. Hmm. Well, not, it's not mean bluntly, but John, how long have you and I known each other? Oh, man, probably, uh, for, for, uh, well, 10 years About anyway. It. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I would say, yeah. And how many times have you and I had to have this conversation with each other? Well, not no, we haven't. And and it's exactly and if if you asked, I would tell you. Exactly. But, but you can um, push it on me. Well, it's not uh, even about that. Sometimes, well, you don't live here, so I'm not going to drag you into my church probably. Although right. if I did pay round trip airfare, you'd probably come. Uh <laughs> the because <laughs> I don't want to be rude. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, you're upper Midwest. <laughs> um but it, you know, if there were people if there's somebody here that needs to, I'm, I'm trying to become better at that. If I meet somebody and they say, man, I'd really like to find a church. Okay. I, I can help. Uh, yeah. If they say I'm hopeless, I don't know what to do. I'm going to, I'm going to bring them this direction too. I'm going to offer sure. that up because if you don't that's have hope, different. that's the hope. It is different. You're right. I'm not going to, I don't go out of my way to do it. Um, uh, you know, there are so many, uh, uh, sayings in around the Christian faith. One is uh, let people know you're a Christian, but use as few words as possible. Right. And that, so and that, that, that's what a that great means thing, is that's you a great should thing live. To live by. You should live yep. as though you're a believer and and not tell people. You don't need to right. if you do it and, the right and, way. And and just to to be clear, this isn't this doesn't just only encompass Christians. They're mm -hmm. not the only ones. But let me ask you this. How often do you know that someone is practicing another religion aside from certain things like a yarmulke for, for Jewish people or, <laughs> sure. or a, uh, um, I forgot the name of it, but, uh, Habib, for, Hajib, Hajib, uh, 
yeah, something, yeah, for the for Muslims and and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. With, yeah. Without the outward signs that that state that someone's a certain religion, how often do you really oh. do people go around and go, "I am only doing this because I'm a good Jew." Uh, you know, yeah, I don't so hear that. I, I, I don't. As I often. don't know if it's that well because the Christians are, especially where you are. It, oh God, yeah. uh, the the highest well, concentration I, but, of people. I, I lived in St. Louis. I actually lived in the Jewish part of St. Louis. Mm-hmm. You never heard. I had a rabbi that lived in the apartment next to me. You mm-hmm. never heard him push anything. I didn't even know he was a rabbi for the first year we lived there. You know, so it's you know it it's that sort of thing. That's kind of my point. You know, it's sure. not. You don't need to push it on people. You don't need to well, use it as a uh, crutch, if you will. I think there's a difference between telling people uh, what you are, or, or uh, for instance, if if I'm a rabbi or a pastor, and you live near me, and I happen across you, at some point, I'm going to try and have a conversation. I'm going to, if it comes up, I'm going to say, "This is what I do," um, I, and it's not, uh, it's not to to say well, you need to, you know, X, Y, or Z. It's just a matter of fact thing. One of right. my favorite stories is uh, uh, one of my pastors in uh, Wisconsin, who will be friends uh, if I have anything to say about it for uh, to the day I die, until the day I die. But just a, a cool dude, and we always got along really well. He and I played golf together in this outing with my brother and another friend of ours, and we after the after we played golf and we sucked, so it didn't matter. But it was it was fun. We had a great time. We went to the the restaurant at the golf course, bar restaurant, and there's a guy I went to high school with. It was a, mm-hmm. a fundraiser for my high school uh, for uh, uh, for uh, scholarships. And, uh, and this guy came up, and he's F-bomb, 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 F-bomb. And I'm looking at Pastor Craig, and I'm just going, uh-oh. <laughs> and Craig, you got to know him because he's not only hilarious, but – this dude is telling the whole story and I'm sweating and I'm like, really, are you, you have any, you know, and I didn't say anything. And I look at Craig and I'm going, can I tell him? And he he goes, no, 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 no. So this guy just continues on. And and I just, in the worst way, wanted to say, Hey, Goob, let me uh, introduce you to uh, pastor Craig. I just really wanted to, Craig would (laughs) let me and he's just laughing. Yeah, it was, it was great. But Anyway, so he knows the words. He just doesn't uh, doesn't use. He them. doesn't choose to use them, and that's <laughs> fine. I use, you yes. know, what? I use the words. To me, they're power words. Mm. In and he, but it's, I'm not going to walk into a presentation and start doing that. You know, there's a time and a place, and I have known, I have known religious people, pastors, pastors, and sure. and priests, and things like that, or it's some that are like that. They use those words, you know, words. But anyway, that's that's a whole other story. Sure. My whole point to the, the thing is, you know, the last week has been very rough. Not for mm. work has been fantastic. I've really enjoyed Good. work. Yeah. But, you know, just all the stuff that, and it always seems to happen around this time of year where people just get so angsty. You are not my only friend who does not like people things. Yeah. Um, and in, in fact, uh, my friend Carrie, Matt's wife, uh, is this in that way in, in many regards, she, she just doesn't. And, and I'm kind of getting more that way. Yeah. Um, and I think of it in terms and we were talking about traffic cause I was riding the Harley earlier today mm-hmm. and in this area of Florida, because of the influx of snowbirds. And I don't want to say they're bad people because we may end up snow burning at some point too right um but it's just an influx of people who come down here so you you can imagine the population and then take it and multiply it by a third and that's what happens like over the course of two weeks so you get (laughs) there's a meme that's great it's an old lady behind the wheel of a car and it says snowbirds at the top and she says i'm back and i'm a year older (laughs) And so it's it's kind of like that. It's you get these people driving that aren't used to driving down here. Mm-hmm. Uh, they haven't been here for six months or eight months or whatever it is, and uh, and it's just not as safe an environment. And you hear constantly about motorcycles, uh, you know, sure, be, people being killed on bikes, and the, you know, sometimes it's the people on the motorcycle that made a mistake, but often yeah. it's the often it's the people turning left in front of them. And so it's game over. It doesn't have to be a motorcycle either. I had a guy today, oh, which yeah. again, this, this now, does it happen? Sure. But does this happen often? 
No, not until again, this time of year. I had a guy on a pedal bike, a real bike, like a 10 speed. Yeah. That's what we used to call it, kids. Do they still speed. make those kids? Yeah. Well, this guy <laughs> probably, this maybe this was a 25-year-old, 30-year-old right. bike. I okay. don't know. But it was, you know, it had the curled handlebars. And, oh, yeah. Uh, the a true 10 speed. <laughs> yes. I am turning, it's a, it's a four lane road. So two straight and with a, with a turn lane in the middle or a suicide lane, but it's an actual turn lane, yep. four way stop, both lanes. So both intersection or both uh, sides of the intersection are four lanes and green arrow turning left. This asshole <laughs> on a pedal bike, a 10 speed pulls over into the suicide lane, goes off on my left hand. And as the green light goes, he goes straight while people are trying to turn what? left on this intersection. He held up, a whole, and because he's not going that fast, he held up this intersection to the point where the car in front of me finally got to turn. I was behind them, turned, and then the light turned red for the turn lane. Wow, what six, a jerk. Five or six cars could have gone if he hadn't done wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's just inexcusable. I, the, uh, he's lucky that there wasn't an idiot oh. in front of me. Oh, yeah. Who Because I, I have seen people not even care. Jeez. Not even care. Now, and I, wow. I should say the guy in front of me, ironically, I was behind him pulling out of the parking lot at the grocery store. And he was not paying. He was distracted the whole time. Like, he could have gone. Wow. Like, Two minutes, maybe a minute, maybe 60 seconds before he actually did because there was yeah. no traffic. And he had me and other people behind me honking at him, trying to get him to go, go, like, wow. go, go, completely distracted. So wow. that, that biker was super lucky that for that split second, this dude was not distracted. Wow. And I mean, that's another thing we see so much of. It's at the, the front of the line at a stoplight, whether it's turning left or going straight or whatever. And just sitting there. And it's usually, yeah. you know, on a phone or something like yep. that. And my line to Lisa is always, you had one job. <laughs> You're at the front <laughs> of the line. You had one exactly. job. It's not yeah. to get on your phone. It's, you know what? If you want to get on your phone, wait till you're second in line or third yep. or, or 20th, even better. Right. Then it won't affect people. But it's just amazing how often it happens. Put oh, the no. phone down. Plug it into... CarPlay or Apple or Android Auto or something, and let the let the technology work for you rather than right. taking well, away I'll, your attention. Okay. To be fair, this dude was in an in, in, <laughs> in Impala that was probably an early two thousands Impala. Not so going to have those. Not going to have any of those things. Yet. Sure, it was not a new car and it was beat up too. So it looks like he's been distracted quite a few times. <laughs> well, um, yeah, just, apparently just, he does. He's just like just that at work too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, all right. So we've spent 33 minutes being. Uh, this is quite, good, though. Uh, good, but it, I, I feel like we've been negative. So let's 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 talk about oh, some boy. positive things coming in. Happy the, holidays. Happy holidays. Yeah. This is coming hey, out the week of Thanksgiving. That's what we should do for the seventh inning stretch. Instead of take me out to the ball game. Yeah. We should do happy holidays. Why don't you start it? No. <laughs> um, moving on. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be able to hear. Let's see if you guys can hear this uh, let's hope over so. this. But I'm, uh, this is what I'm, oh, I've lost it. Oh, no. Nick, not So that. while we're talking, and again, not a sponsor. Yes. Something I have been experimenting with that I've actually found that I like quite a bit. Uh-oh. Here it is. Um, the search engine, or not search engine, sorry, the browser, Opera. Really? Yeah. Because I'm looking at my Instagram feed, I don't have to have my phone, which is actually who, my camera today. Who whose is that? Is it it's, uh, no, it's the umbrella? Opera, opera no, is the, the opera. Okay, yeah. so it, a lot of different things you can do on it, and, and you don't have to. I don't have to have multiple screens open. It's really cool. But I can. Best part is I can listen to. Um, um starting over again. Can you hear that? Oh yes! Oh yeah, I love this version. Yeah, can you can you tell people what this version is? Well, it's thunder, and I don't know or thunderstruck. I, oh, I know it's the uh, it's the is this the tractor? 
Uh, clo- yeah, the tractor's in the background. Yeah, this is yeah. The, the hillbilly version where it's uh, I, I love they this got a one. banjo, a mandolin, <laughs> a bass, like a bass bass, not a bass guitar. Uh, yeah. And yeah, they're beating on a on a wash pin. Yeah, it's pretty good. It, it's I'm not sure it's these if it's these guys or there was another one, but it, there was one where they started up a tractor and it was okay. like an old John Deere. And because of how, and farmers, I'm sure, could tell me, but I, I can't, because of how the cylinders went, and I'm guessing it was probably yeah. a four-cylinder, but, but it was two-cylinder. Ding, 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 yep. ding. And it was so, the beat was so perfect, that's what they used as the the yeah. percussion. Okay, I haven't seen that one, but I know what oh you Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, it was great. So it's, it's actually, I don't think it's a two-cylinder. I think it's actually, no, it has to be a two-cylinder. Uh, they use it. They actually use that tractor motor in in some old fashioned ice cream making. And in oh. Franklin, Tennessee, they'll actually they, they they there's an ice cream stand at a lot of the events where they actually have an old John Deere motor, two cylinder so motor. The belt, that, the belt yep, is yep. The belt drive. Yeah, I've yeah, saw, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Oh, it's so cool. It's so much fun. I love stuff like that. I mean, it's I do too. And it's cool I, because it's it's um uh. It, I it just it, it draws back to you know the old time and these tra- and I've driven some of those tractors over the years yeah. and they're well they last wow. a long time that's well my my to. dad yeah my dad when he was when I was younger and he was obviously younger uh cuz so in 1973 74 mm. dad I'm sorry if I don't get that year right mom I know <laughs> rest in peace I'm sorry if I didn't get the year right but they bought a farm <laughs> Uh, because they were both both uh raised in in the Twin Cities, so they were both city mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. And when they got after they got married, they went and bought a farm just before my mom and dad separated. Nice. And uh, my dad had that farm for a long time. I mean, he didn't sell it until he moved to uh to North Dakota. Well, there was another move in between, but that only lasted a couple of years. But you know, until he moved to North Dakota to the farm he's on now, but he had a farm for. For all of me growing up, as far as mm. I, I mean, it was from the day I was born until I think I was 18, 19, hmm. maybe even 20 years old. So cool. he had it a long time. Um, and he always had the old tractors and he could always get a new tractor, but the old tractors were just fine. And that's what I learned to yeah. drive was, was an old, old tractor. Yep. You know, the kind that it didn't matter how good you were, you always ground the gears. <laughs> yes, always. I, yeah. I remember those. Yeah. Yeah, those, those are, and they they still they're great. They're and a lot of people still use them. I mean, there are a lot of people that are use a modern tractor just because. But most of these tractors, if you took care of them, they still work. And All still about excellent that. tractors. That's, that's yeah. ex- absolutely tractors. correct. And they, you know, I mean, even you think about the usage, how they use them. It, it, mm-hmm. Over time, it's not. It's not like you're putting on a whole bunch of miles. You're going back and forth in a in a field over and over and over again. But, and so, yes, they need maintenance, uh, yep. but there Don't are, we, all. <laughs> we certainly do. I, you know what? I enjoy watching uh, on YouTube, some of the, the farm uh, shows, and these are usually younger kids who have run a farm. Uh, the son, S O N N E, the Sonny farms in uh, Iowa. Mm-hmm. They uh, just, cool people uh dad is kind of involved at a distance and he's about my age and his son has just taken over most of the farm work and uh it's just fun to watch some of that stuff yeah and of course a reminder because they're always doing maintenance and if yep, you always. don't have an appreciation for farmers, for. well yeah except they still do lots of other work in the winter oh too. sure They've they got do cattle, sure. uh, as well so but it's it's kind of fun just to watch that stuff and if it is winter you don't give a crap because you don't have to go out and put on the uh, parkas right. and the boots and all that stuff. Right. So, yeah, I watch a couple. There's one, one family in Montana, mm-hmm. uh, in the flat part of Montana and cool. one family in Southern Minnesota on YouTube. They, they actually chronicle all of that. So side note, I just have to let you know, cause I, I was going to about to turn off Instagram and, and with this thing scrolled up and, and I was up for an award. I was a huh. uh, runner up for an award and I lost. Nice. Yeah, it what? was. Uh, yeah, Prince William beat me. Uh. <laughs> he Prince William was named the sexiest bald man of the year. I look, 
I, I think that if you wore fewer hats, people see people just don't know Probably. that you're bald. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know, and it's it's so I I guess being a prince of a of a country and you know being being related to the current king and, and the past queen probably gets you a leg up over someone who is as popular as we are in the podcast world. Yes, for sure. Well, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't know because I have hair, so I, I really right. don't yeah, know you any of that. You wouldn't even be able to compete. No, I, I mean, we could help. Try. But yeah, I know you have. I could, I was only, I was only eligible that one year when it all fell out. But other right, than that. Because of chemo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It right. was good. Yeah, that was my my ball. Oh, this could be awesome! I get to see how bad my head's going to look. You know, because you don't know. Yeah, uh, speaking from haired people, you, you right. don't know what it's going to look like underneath because well, you know playing and, football and basketball and right. got knocked it around a lot. And, yeah, yeah, those of us who are follically challenged, they you know we we <laughs> had those questions and then you know eventually it was solved. But I will say I still have the the, the side hair. You do. I, I have my. I call it the donut, uh, and part <laughs> of that is because I have shaved it almost completely, and yep. I do have certain bumps on my head that the hair still hides. Right? Oh, that's so good. I would good probably to know. go fully bald because I think good it looks better if I didn't have some of the things that I have on my head. Well, I'm liking you with the beard too, and I, 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 I know I've said that, that before, I, but that's yeah. really what Jen thinks that matters. Well, no, it's not even Jen. Jen doesn't mind the beard. Oh, um, she doesn't necessarily care necessarily when it when it goes <laughs> to a certain like now it's soft. And yeah. she doesn't mind it when it's soft. The problem is I touch my face constantly. You probably saw me a couple times. I'm going like, going like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I we, play with uh, the, the hair. The listeners and I have been talking about it on the I side know, I know, quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. Uh, but I play with it. So I, sh- and I, <laughs> it starts and it itches. And so eventually it'll have to go because I just can't stand it anymore. But I honestly think it looks really, I think it looks, I think I look better with it than I do without it. Oh, I just can't so. stand it. I just well, can't stand it. Well, maybe you can. Maybe you just need to give it more time. I've given it time. I I will make the longest I've gone. To be fair, the longest yes. I've gone is two months with a beard. Okay, with a full beard. I've yep. gone three or four months with a goatee. I it just yeah. I'm more worried, honestly. If I I'm more worried about my bottom teeth because I, I'm doing this constantly. Oh, well, and I feel like wow. I probably push my yeah because I it, <laughs> it, my teeth start to hurt. Oh jeez! <laughs> well, you just have to stop all these weird, uh, weird. I do. Habits. I have a lot of. Well, the other thing is a lot of, and these are all people that listen to our podcast, and we've had yes. one, at least one of them on the podcast before. Yeah, all of us on my team, we're all the same age, and all the the men are all the same age, and we all have facial hair now. Okay. Every single one of the team, my teammates, have brown beards, and I'm Santa Claus white. Well, I, and it's probably because I'm an anxious asshole and I'm constantly worried about something. So I'm coming. I mean, even on this camera right now, I actually it's darker on the camera now than I'm used to. I'm kind of impressed. But I, yeah, in real life, it's just it's white. It's very white. I could be. I mean, the, it is my patron saint. It's going back to the religious talk. My patron saint is the, Saint Nicholas. So, oh, well, he's so the patron saint of children and pawnbrokers. Oh, if you don't it up. Yeah, he is. Terrific. Yeah. yeah. They actually said that, pawnbrokers. Yeah. No, no, he oh. had pawnbrokers. Look him up. Patron I, Saint. Saint Nicholas mm. is the patron saint. Patron. God, I can't even say that word. Patron. Patron Saint. Yeah. Children and pawnbrokers. I, wow. I think, I think maybe that uh, pawnbrokers might claim him. As a patron Maybe. saint, but I don't think in his definition, in his Let's bio, it, up. it probably doesn't right. say, you know, because uh, I'm not sure there were that many pawnbrokers back in 18th century Germany. It's the, it's the second oldest um, business in the world. Wow. Okay. All right. So I did I a search. I know what you're going to say the first is. St. Nicholas is the patron saint yeah. of sailors, merchants. He's a painter. He's a painter. He, he's right? a painter. Yeah, uh, a patron saint of yeah. sailors, merchants. That's probably where they're getting that from. Archers, repentant thieves, children, <laughs> brewers, pawnbrokers, and students. <laughs> and that's coming from so, Boston College. Well, I don't care where it's coming from. It's the point is he didn't choose them; they chose him. Whatever. 
Boston yeah, no, College it's not says, a whatever. I can Boston see College children. Says children. I can see children. Brewers. So these yeah. are all my favorite things. I like I like boats. The Milwaukee I like Brewers. Shopping. Yeah. Yeah, Milwaukee Brewers. I'm, I'm pretty good at. Uh, well, that is <laughs> Milwaukee Bruins Brewers. By Brewers, the way, yeah. yes, are are the. Um, well, let me rephrase it. Put it a different way. The Nashville Sounds. <laughs> yes, are the minor league team for the Brewers for the Milwaukee Brewers. Yes, yeah. One of anyway, them. I like yes. I like bow, bow and arrows. Um, I, I'm not so so keen on the repentant thieves, but you know everyone's got to have a second chance. Is that children, because you're unrepentant? Good with children. Uh, brewers, I, I like brewers. <laughs> Say it. I also like I also like people that make wine, but um, wine oh, makers, wine makers, Farm brokers, right. eh, and students because I'm I am constantly trying to learn new things. That's great. Well, yeah. again, uh, they chose him; he didn't chose them. Choose them. He didn't chose them, but I'm <laughs> the one choose. who's drinking. Saint Dominic, which is my middle name, is the patron saint of astronomers, scientists. Falsely accused people and the Dominican <laughs> Republic and oh, other locales crap. throughout the Do world. They have a meeting like the falsely accused people. Uh-huh. Do they yeah. like have meetings. Yeah, I. But you know what? Here's the here's the kicker because they have <laughs> pictures that have come come along with uh, the saint pictures. Saint Jeez. Nicholas, yes. my first name Saint, white beard. Saint Dominic, dark beard. Huh. So that's why I'm Nicholas instead of Dominic. You got a little salt and pepper though. You got a little pepper. Well, I've got Dominic in the middle. So, yeah, yeah. Well, that's terrific. So that was a history history lesson. Uh, (laughs) Historic. A lot of historic lesson. A lot of history. A lot of uh, religion today, folks. Oh my gosh! Uh, I hope we uh, haven't lost anybody. But then again, if we Uh, lost people, we probably gained a few more people. Going, oh, this is a great religious podcast. I often wondered about Saint Nicholas. No, I know. Yeah. Well, it is that time of year. I mean, uh, Saint Nick's Day is coming up. Very, very it sure is. Sure is. Yeah. I should show you sometime, John. I'm not going to show the podcast people, but I should show you. I have pictures of my grandfather, my, my mom's father, yeah. uh, who died at, he was in his early 60s, 63. Uh, mm. He used to actually play St. Nicholas yeah. in our, the town that I grew up in. So he would don the whole costume and, and put on the white, he had a white beard and he was an artist. Nice. So, uh, yeah. So I've got newspaper newspaper clippings. We had this restaurant in town called the Dutch House, and my grandfather was Dutch. He came over from Holland, uh, uh, and uh, so yeah, he played Saint Nicholas and for many, many years. <laughs> you know, I cannot stand two types of people: the kind Saint that makes fun of other cultures, like and you were the just Dutch. Doing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so Sorry. true. That's, uh, no, that was good. Uh, that was good. That's uh, that's. Uh, uh, my yeah. my cousin. So my first name supposedly. This is what my mom always told me. My my aunt argues with me about it, uh, which she often does. But my mom <laughs> supposedly wanted to call me Peter. That was my first. My it was Nicholas Peter was my first name. My well, my dad changed it to Nicholas Dominic because Dominic is also his middle name. So uh, I would I, he didn't. I don't know if he didn't want me to be a Steve Junior or if my mom didn't want me to be a Steve Junior because my dad's name is obviously Stephen. But yeah. uh, so it, he gave me the middle name instead. But uh, my cousin, who's my aunt's oldest son, his first name is Peter, and he's named after my grandfather. Uh, but the irony of it is there is St. Nicholas's assistant. So let's think of it as, as his elf. His if elf. you're thinking about Santa Claus, but sure. he's not an elf. It's, right. it's Svarta, Svarta Pete. Svarta Pete. Svarta Pete. All right, Svarta Pete. And Svarta Pete is mistaken for a lot of things because most of the time in the way back when, they don't do it anymore. Way back when it was he was put in blackface. Okay. And my cousin, who's who's ten years older than I am, I think, my cousin would play Svarta Pete with my grandfather and they would do blackface. <laughs> Not because he was African, but because of the coal dust. Ah. Interesting. But that's why they don't do it nowadays because it is the blackface and obviously it would not be. Of, yeah, it, yeah. it wouldn't go over well whatsoever, yeah. even though it has yeah. nothing to do with that. So there you go. More yeah. history. Well, very well done. That's uh, not really. No, not, I we've lost a, most of our listeners at this point. I think most of them were wondering. I would, you know what I'd love to know when I turn on a podcast more Sparta about St. Nick and Sparta, and Sparta Pete. Pete. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Well, well I hope you all learned something. Well, I, I said our listeners, but our viewers probably stuck around going, whew, this is getting good. <laughs> and start shaking it. Hey, this is awesome. Man. Yeah. So before we go, John, I, I, we're yes. going to wrap it up here, but before we go, any announcements <laughs> about anything that has shown up on our website that you have auto, uh, um, automatically utilized and Automatically, yes, I could not help myself. You, you, yeah, I was already. To. I meant to say already. You lost. I went to our new, newly updated merch store that Nick so lovingly cared for, and I ordered some merch, t-shirt, I did hat, and excited about getting them. So uh, yeah, yeah surprised you didn't get the one piece swimming suit. Uh, you know, I, I I didn't have it in my size. Ah, yeah, I can fix that. Yeah, boys medium is what I was going for. Uh, <laughs> oh boy! Yes, I was a little surprised to see, and there are some there are some cool chach out there too. There are coffee mugs and things like that. But I, I really like say, the I, coffee mug. I was a little surprised that you chose the one piece ladies swimsuit. I just thought it would be kind of weird, kind of fun uh, it's because definitely most of the... weird and ladies, yeah. if you're thinking about maybe a quick trip to Florida. Or yeah. if you already live in Florida, well, I really, or I really California, put it up there or Arizona for Lisa because I knew that she likes to sit by the pool and listen to the podcast. And I'm like, she's now you be... can sit by the pool, listen to the podcast in a one piece potty mouth swimming. Suit. That's uh, I think as soon as she hears that argument, I'm sure we'll be putting in another order. Probably not. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I don't know. Like she needs to wear anything <laughs> by our pool. Come on. <laughs> Hey, you were talking about before we got on the podcast that you were yeah. doing some plumbing, and I'm like, that's TMI, buddy. Oh, my God. And then he added, yeah. in the master bedroom. I'm like, dude, I don't it, need to what? hear any of this. It's, I, in the master shower, I'm doing plumbing, and it's sadly, it's really <laughs> plumbing. And uh, it's not a euphemism for anything. Yeah, that's and I will, I will say this. After the religious this, podcast, that's a really good thing. Well, it's, it's important. <laughs> it, plumbers are, can, can know Jesus, too. Yeah. So <laughs> who's the patron saint of plumbers? It's oh, not Saint no. Nicholas or Saint Dominic. Oh my gosh. It's got to be John. somebody with water. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Saint John the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he was ever sainted, but that's all right. I, I don't know. I we I could look that up, but you know what? Podcasts end. People will just have to wait until next Ooh, episode. That's the next gonna episode. get them to come back. Well, let me ask you this, John. Sure. I, there's a good chance, honestly, folks, because it has been commonplace in the last five seasons where uh, this is the busy time of the year where we do tend to have uh, classic episodes more often than not. So Maybe you might you might see a fresh episode next week. Maybe you might not. So, you know what? Check back to find out. And John, how can people check to see if it's a new episode? All you need to do is go to pottymouse.com and Nick will usually let you know where it came from. Is it new? Yep. Is it fresh? Is it old? Our, well, can, we're never yeah. fresh, but uh, well, we're always true. fresh, depending on how fresh. you want to look at it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, you, could, you could do that. You could also sign up for the um, newsletter, which I yep. send out. It's not really a newsletter. It's just a kind of an announcement. Every time a new episode comes out, you'll get an email saying, hey, there's a new episode or there's a classic episode. Which you I got to tell you, I kind of like. I like getting I the, the email uh, reminder. Not that I need a reminder, but, right. uh, you know, sometimes. And it pops up on YouTube, which is yep. kind of good, but it's part of uh, part of the recommendations. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we also have shorts up there. You know, I love the little shorts. I don't, I'm not as consistent as yep. I would like to be, but the shorts are kind of fun. I've actually been, folks and John, actually been naming the <laughs> podcast using the AI that picks the shorts for us. Oh, nice. You know what else I'd like really to do? Good names. I think we should have shorts on the merch page. Page. I was looking for shorts <laughs> on the merch page. I didn't see any I like. I was going to add that to the swimwear collection, but again, oh. nothing nothing available yet. I'm working. Yeah. On it. Okay. There Keep are and there will be a few more things with our regular awesome. logo that are that'll come up. You'll see them all pop up right there. It's That's all vintage awesome. right now. That vintage logo. And we're talking about maybe a new one. Excuse we'll me. see how that goes, and I need yep, to get on are. that as well. So that's exciting yep. stuff. We got a, we have a lot of a lot of things coming up, especially in the new year. There's there will be sure. a few more things that you're going to see in the new year that John and I are really excited about on our sixth season. Oh my our goodness! Sixth and season, I know most of you on your resolution list, besides all the usual crap like I have on mine, uh, you should put. You need to bring on at least two or three people. Yep. To potty mouths. Yep. Exactly. Bring them I on think that's a good resolution. Make them, make them commit to listening or watching 
or oh, as John and I always put two for a month, <laughs> well, John and I always put it. And if you have enemies, invite your enemies to listen. It's really not a bad idea. Jesus really said, isn't. love your enemies since we're right. talking this about is a good way to love your enemies. Yeah, it is for sure. Stick them on the podcast. We'll love them for you. <laughs> we'll love them for you. <laughs> <laughs> On that, on note, that folks, note, have a fantastic <laughs> week. Happy Thanksgiving. I look forward to talking to you again soon, both to you, John, and to our listeners slash viewers. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. See ya.